They're a sign of hope. They're a sign of wildness. You know, I think they're a sign of like our true nature. I mean, I've been working with condors over 20 years, but if I saw one right now, I'd be as excited as you were seeing one for the first time. They're kind of the unsung heroes of the ecosystem. They're out there doing the dirty job that nobody wants to do. And at the end of the day, it's a really important one. Currently in Central California, we have 98 birds. 1997, we had zero. We started releasing. We've climbed from there to um, 98 in the last 20 years. I was uh, the assistant curator at Oregon Zoo when the breeding program first started. It was definitely very exciting to be part of that first egg that was hatched in Oregon in over 150 years. But it was quite the wild ride. I said, if we run out of fuel, we might have to huddle with this egg to keep it warm. <laughs> and at the time I was joking, but it, I was actually pretty serious. So fortunately, I didn't have to huddle the, with the egg. Incubator fired back up, 340 went on to hatch. Three forty gets sent from Oregon down to Pinnacles National Park. He gets released and he just thrives. And he is now the most dominant bird in that flock over there. Once they're out and on their own, I mean, they are completely free and wild. We have no control over where they go. Every bird is incredibly valuable, especially when you only have 98. We know from um, our research that pretty much any condor out in the wild has been exposed to lead poisoning. It is the leading cause of death, so we take it very seriously. We try to trap the birds once, twice a year and take a blood sample. And on the spot, we, can, um, we have an analyzer that can tell us, if, give us a ballpark estimate of where their lead is. He's gone through the gauntlet and he survived. So he's a, he's a really resilient, strong bird. The single biggest thing people can do is, you know, if they have family that hunt, just to get them to switch to non-light ammunition. I mean, that is single. It's not only benefiting the condor, it benefits bald eagles, it benefits the whole ecosystem. I always joke with the, my crew is that I'm always, I'm a little partial to 340 because we go way back. I've known him since he was in an egg. And uh, you know, I know the trials he went through. So to see him out in the wild thriving is a real testament to the success of this project. I mean, he's really the epitome of what, what's been accomplished with condors. We know the birds can do it. They've shown us bird, 340 is a classic example. All the natural pieces of the puzzle are there. They have plenty of food. They have plenty of intact, pristine areas that they can still use to thrive in. So we just need to get some of these man-made threats out of the way. And then the end all goal would be to delist them completely like what happened with the bald eagles five years ago. And that would be a time where we have condors all over the entire Western United States, well into Oregon and in the Northwest. We're talking thousands of condors across the landscape. I think the work for Oregon Zoo is not done, it's not done for us, but the great part is that the needle is moving forward.